Are any of you guys out there lawyers? Probably not, but if you are, or if you watch Suits. Take a swing and see what happens. I didn't think so. You should know a thing or two about contracts and that every contract allegedly has a loophole. Basically, it's like your get out of jail free card. It's your way out, your secret shortcut, your way to beat the system. What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on this terrible channel. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at some kids who knew how to beat the system. First of all, thank you guys so much for recommending this to me. I mean, I already feel bad about my own lack of accomplishments as a kid. I mean, you guys don't have to make me feel worse by looking at other kids' accomplishments. Calm thyself. Anyways, the, come on, how bad could they be? When the system isn't working for you, you have to think outside the box. So what do we got here? We got a kid, he's got a square, he can't fit it in a circle, or the other star or triangle, he's, he doesn't know where it goes. Okay, he just opens up the box and puts it in. There you go. I love that at the very end, he even like does a little clap, congratulating himself. Well, I'll hand it to this little kid. That was pretty impressive. I'm pretty sure he or she, they're definitely not going to pass geometry, but aside from that, they're, they're going places. One plus sine x over n. Well, that's an easy problem to do, okay? The first thing you do is you take one plus sine minus n, but you leave in the x and then you minus the other n that you're dividing it by. So that'll leave you with one plus psi x. You know, the x is from the previous problem and there's no n anymore. So all together, I mean, one plus six uh, equals seven. So there's your answer. I don't think this is really cheating the system. I mean, it looks legit to me. Then again, math was never really my strong suit. So for all of you math geniuses out there, feel free to let me know what the actual answer was in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it's seven. Do any of your parents have a super secret stash or drawer or maybe like a, a desk with a lock on it? I think every family or household has at least something like that, you know, like dad or mom's stash that you absolutely are forbidden to get into. Well, in this case, apparently it's in the bathroom. There's a lock on the bottom drawer, so you can't open it. Well, this kid figured out a way to get around this little issue. You see, if you can't go through the lock, all you gotta do is go through the top drawer. You know, my real issue here is not being mad at the kid for getting into dad's stash. For me, the issue is the dad only put the lock on the bottom drawer and not the top one as well. Heck, I mean, it shouldn't even have been the bottom drawer to begin with. I mean, the kid figured out that you can take the top drawer off. I mean, I think we've all figured that out as a kid. It's kind of funny, this brings me back my own childhood memories and I think we were all at that stage when we were young where we tried to figure out the little mechanics of how everything worked. And I specifically remember figuring out that drawers work this way and that they can actually be taken out when I was very young. For those of you guys that have ever cheated on a test, okay, first of all, shame on you. What is wrong with you? I mean, if you're gonna cheat on a test, use silly putty like this person. This way you have a fast, clear, and effective method for copying the answers and just using them to cheat on your test that way. Then again, I never actually used this method. I know it's a little bit dated for all of you millennials watching. Personally, I don't think I've ever really cheated on a test, but I I did have friends that did. I had a friend that I think took a 0 0.05 millimeter pencil, the really, really skinny tip kind, and literally drew on her finger math, all of these tiny little math equations on all of her fingernails. Yeah, I don't know what math she was in. I think it was like trig three or something. Did she pass? I don't know, because she actually wasn't really my friend. I just asked her why she was drawing on her nails in music class one time, and that was the only time we ever spoke. All right, guys, we're back on the topic of geometry. I hope you guys had a nice little break. For your homework tonight, I just want you to do something simple, and I want you to name these 2D shapes. Sure thing, teacher. I'll get right on that. Let's see. Uh, this one's going to be Jade, uh, Charlotte, Charlie, So. Pia, Harriet, Emily, and Maria. So uh, what's my score, teacher? Did I uh, get a hundred? Did I get a pass? Yeah, you can pass yourself back down to algebra one. Well, I mean, you know, the, the instructions weren't made that clear. I mean, technically, they didn't do anything wrong. They named the shapes. The only thing I would fault the student on in this case is uh, having a big old capital P in the middle of Sophia. You guys ever met a Sophia? Yeah, me neither. Oh gosh, well, here we go. One of my favorite subjects, English writing. So basically, this kid had a class where he believed that the teacher only read, you know, partial or some of their essays and didn't actually think that he had to write an entire full essay to get credit. I've been there actually before. We used to have these like 20 point uh, three page note packets. We had to fill them out every week and basically my teacher would just look through them and then you know give us the points. Literally 50% of the time 
the last two pages, I would just jumble in broken English, and sometimes scribble, sometimes just like pictures. And I'd still get the credit for it. I'm sorry to my ninth grade science teacher, but you know, like, did you, hey, you didn't check, okay? And I just, I was doing what this kid was doing. I was just testing it out. Still passed. So anyways, about here, this kid starts just writing mumbo jumbo. In all honesty, I'm already bored with this topic. It is far less interesting than I had hoped, and I don't want to finish this essay. I'm fairly sure you don't really read these, so I'm just gonna put enough words words down to make it seem like I wrote a lot while I killed time. Want to hear some words that rhyme with time? Crime, dime, mime. <laughs> Mimes are funny. Mimes are funny. You, you're bald, you don't like to touch people, spice a girl. Supermodels aren't supposed to talk anyway. Boo, you Chime, time. Ah, oh, dude, you know what has lime in it? Sprite. It's like lemon lime. I could really go for one of those about now. But not Sierra Mist. That just isn't the same. It tries too hard to be Sprite, but it just can't pull it off. It should just try to be itself and stop trying to measure up to other sodas. Unfortunately, that's where the essay gets cut off. I gotta hand it to the kid. I don't think he needs therapy or anything. I think he's solving his existential crisis on his own. But you gotta hand it to him. He's a, he's a good poet. He knows what rhymes with crime and dime and lime. Mimes are funny. What we have here, folks, is the classic old-fashioned caterpillar. I used to do this when I was a kid. Then again, I only had a bunk bed for like three months, so I wasn't really able to do it often. Whenever you just want your own hammock, but your parents won't buy you one, you just have to make one. Is it really safe? Heck nah, mine broke every time I did it after the first two minutes. Okay, but on a perfectly serious note, how did this little kid, they look like they're like three years old, how did they actually do this? I think I was seven and I couldn't even do it right. You have two options, a 50-50 chance of getting the answer right. True or false. Damn, this kid got every single question wrong. I just said they have a 50-50% chance of, you know, getting them right. How could this guy get every single one of them wrong? I mean, even if he just wrote true the entire time, he should have got at least one of them right, right? What about if he writes false the entire time? Same thing, right? What if he writes true and false simultaneously? No. Are you not allowed to do that? Well, this kid did. He wrote true and false at the same time same word. Look at that. This is genius. The T is an F and here's the A which is also an R. This is an L and an S which is also a U. And then the E. That does not change. E for life. All right. Well, it may not have worked on, on this teacher, but guys, I encourage you to try this on your next homework assignment. Not every single question. Maybe just like one, maybe two. No less than three. And yeah, let me know what your teacher says. I mean, if you pass, you fail, you get kicked out of class. Don't blame me for it, okay? Because this is just a silly video and you don't have to listen to anything I say. But yeah, you guys should totally do it. Let me know how it works out. And yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna end today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like. Also hit that subscribe button down below if you're new. Also click that little bell icon next to subscribe so you're never late when I upload a new video. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.